the flatness to the mountains, yet still Texas. A quote from John Steinbeck. Once you're in Texas, it seems forever to get out, and some people never make it. End of quote. Second largest state after Alaska, Texas is twice as big as Germany. We drove over 700 miles from the Gulf Coast to the most western part of the Lone Star State. The border runs through the city, which historically was El Paso del Norte, and now across the river is Mexican Ciudad Juarez and El Paso on the Texas side. The city of El Paso resides in Chihuahua Desert, nested between Franklin Mountains and Rio Grande. It has a nickname of the Sun City because it has over 300 days of the sun every year. With 80% of Latino population, it was the safest metro city in four consecutive years in the U.S. and stays in top three safest metro cities ever since. This is downtown, the center of commercial and social activity. The downtown not very big but beautiful, while the rest of the city looks more flat and dusty. Love this cozy cafe with the bookshelves. See this mountain reflection in the blue glass building wall? The National Border Patrol Museum, the only in the United States, has free admission. One can learn about various methods which can be used to cross the border. Here's how can you cover the tracks. Those self-made lawn motorbikes were made to bring illegals from Mexico to Arizona. Boats made by Cuban refugees to get to Florida. This big has Russian motor and made from metal scrap and uh, tarpaulin. The second made from two truck hoods welded together. Dogs played very important role in the border patrol. Remember this cartoon? <laughs> this comical personality is native here to Southwest Desert. They earned this name from the habit to run towards the cars. Some had been clogged at 20 miles per hour and fast enough to prey on the rattlesnake. They belong to family of cuckoo. But those are native from Africa, Guinea fowl. Nobody knows how they ended up at our RV site, but they live here forever and feel at home. Looks like they bully all cats and birds around. Nasty behavior. The smartest are watching all that from the safety. Texas experience wouldn't be complete without visiting the real ranch. Indian Cliffs Ranch helped us to imagine the Old West, which it truly was. Many well-known movies were shot at exactly this spot. You can easily imagine all the actions here. As they say, to this day, Indian campsites, fire pits, and piles of pottery charts are found all over the ranch. Asha was somewhat surprised seeing the totally black cows. Just look at these long horns. Almost like the elephant tusk. Hey. Buffalo looks very intelligent here. Hey. Hey. It's very difficult not to be surprised by the dramatic sweep of such a headgear. And of course they have many horses. Hey. Not really big ones, but I guess those are the best for the riding. Those goats had a good life here, as it appears. Looks exactly like a children's playground. Mufflon gave me an empty stare. How about getting into the middle of this fluffy mess? They are so cute, might be health hazard. I kept filming them, and those fluffy hooligans tried to bite off the camera lens. Too much, just too much. And we found the prototype of our trailer. Guess who else we met at the ranch? Our fellow Canadians. Canadian geese, of course. From Midland, perhaps. 34 million years ago, magma pushed through the limestones and cooled down. Erosion created natural tanks for collecting the rainwater. That's how unique habitat in the middle of the desert was created. The place is called Waco Tanks. People use those rocks for climbing, hiking, but only 70 people are allowed to be there at the same time. We haven't planned to stay in Texas for that long. Just happened this way. No regret though. Texas could be country on its own. They have everything they need. Great people as well. We haven't met any real redneck in two months. Some of them apologize for their president. Thank you, Texas. Next step. 
New Mexico. See you later.